one of the yeah. heroes. Yeah. Can we talk to you? Do you mind? What do you awesome. want to talk about? What happened today? Well, well, went straight out of Dogtown, skateboarding, surfing it up. Before I say anything else, I want to say no matter what you've done, you deserve respect. Even if you make mistakes, you're lovable. And it doesn't matter your look skills or age or size or anything, you're worthwhile. No one could ever take that away from you. Now, this stuff right here, I was driving and I, well, I was in the passenger side of this fucker's car and he comes over on there. He was over by the recycling center. He says, oh, when I was in the Virgin Islands, 30 years old on a business trip, I, 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 I fucked this 14 year old. I was like, you what? He's like, I raped this 14 year old. He starts crying, and gives me a big hug. He's just like, fuck 300 pound guy. I'm like, oh shit, you must be fuckered, man. Like, what's he talking about? I didn't take him seriously at first. He comes driving down this way. He's like, you know what? I come to realize I'm Jesus Christ and I can do anything I fucking want to. And watch this, bam. And he smashed into this fucking guy right there, pinned him in between that fucking truck. And so I fucking, I hop out, I look over, the guy's pinned there. I mean like, freight train riders know this. Like if you get pinned between something, do not fucking move that shit, otherwise you bleed out. Like, motherfucker, I, I ran in, I grabbed the keys, he's fucking sitting there like nothing even happened. And like fucking like, man, if you started driving that car around again, man, there would've been a hell of a lot of bodies around here. Fucking, I hop on out, and so I grab the bag, I threw it over by that pole right there, and then fucking Buddy gets out, and these two women are trying to help him, he runs up and he grabs one of them, man. Like a guy that big can snap a woman's neck like a pencil stick. So I fucking ran up behind him with a hatchet, smash, smash, smash. Yeah. The, the lady said you saved her life. She was the one who got grabbed by that fucker. You know what? Fuck is cool. That guy ain't. Shit. How, how'd you how'd you get in his car? How how did you? I was hitchhiking. I was well. Good thing I was hitchhiking. Yeah. People say don't hitchhike. Well, this is what happens. Was well, yeah. Well, at least I was here. So he did this on purpose. Dude, that guy was fucking cooked out, man. Like he's beyond howling. Like I don't even see any breath in him. You know what I'm saying? Can, can I get your name and where you're from, if you if you don't mind? I'm Kai. Kai, can I get spelling for you? Straight buddy? out of Dogtown, K-A-I. K-A-I, do you have a last name? <laughs> no, bro, I don't have anything. <laughs> where, where, where are you from originally? Are you from Fresno area? Sophia, West Virginia. No kidding. How old are you? I can't call it. Okay. What? On February 2nd, 2013, a local news station in California played a video that went viral and received national attention in the press. I played the video in the beginning so I'll briefly go over it. It features Kai Lawrence, later identified as Caleb Lawrence McGilvery, from Canada. Kai had been hitchhiking and was picked up by a man named Jet Simmons McBride, who weighed 300 pounds and claimed to be Jesus Christ. McBride told Kai he once raped a 14-year-old girl in the Virgin Islands while on a business trip. McBride then crashed into a pedestrian, pinning him against a truck. Kai jumped out of the car to help the pinned pedestrian, while the driver remained in the car. However, when a bystander arrived on the scene to help, McBride jumped out and attacked her in a bear hug. Sensing the woman's life may be in danger, and believing the man could snap her neck, Kai removed a hatchet from his backpack and began to repeatedly strike McBride in the back of the head. After the hits, McBride staggered away and began masturbating at a nearby school. Before the police arrived, and took the man into custody. As of October 27, 2019, the video had over 7 million views. Kai received no punishment for this deeming it was self-defense. In January 2014, McBride was convicted of assault with a deadly weapon and the jury ruled him to be insane, meaning any sentence would be served in a mental hospital and not prison. Kai appeared on Jimmy Kimmel due to the video becoming so popular. After this, Kai continued to travel and play music, finding himself in New York City. On May 11, 2013, Kai was approached by 73-year-old lawyer Joseph Gaffrey, who struck up a conversation with Kai. Kai then made it aware he was heading to New Jersey. The lawyer then offered him a ride to his place to stay. Kai was not surprised by this gesture because of the fame that came with the viral video. On the first night he stayed at Joseph's, they had some drinks and ate dinner. Kai said he felt very tired and went to sleep. When he woke up, he went and looked into the mirror to discover what he thought was drool on his face. Kai was waiting for a ride from his friend that never showed up, and he asked Joseph if he could stay at his house for another night. Kai ended up staying Sunday, 
with Joseph, and after eating and drinking for a second time, Kai began to become very sleepy and fell asleep. But this time, waking up in the evening of Sunday, he found Joseph on top of him, sexually assaulting him. Kai kicked Joseph off of him, knocking the man over, and he continued to fight the man off and left. He then went to a local diner and posted about the incident on Facebook. Joseph actually ended up dying from repeat blows to the head. Kai was then arrested for the murder. Kai was in prison for over five years awaiting trial, which began April 1st, 2019. Kai took the stand in his own defense. A jury then found him guilty of first degree murder and he was sentenced to 57 years in prison. He will serve 85% of that term before the possibility of parole. With the judge telling him, when you become eligible for parole, you will still be younger than Mr. Galfrey was when you murdered him. Kai pleads his innocence, saying it was an act of self-defense and that the police tampered evidence on the scene and that the judge was actually friends with Mr. Galfrey. Hey, how you doing? I'm Steven. Pleasure to meet you, Steven. And this is Kai today. His appearance is much different. Notice the elaborate tattoo on the side of his face. All right. My name is Kai. K-A-I, straight out of Dogtown. This interview is taking place in prison. He's a convicted killer, and this is the first time he's speaking out since his conviction. This situation is hell. This man, Joseph Galfi. He walked up to me and said, hey, look, Wasp, where are you headed? I told him I'm, I'm going over to Jersey, and uh, um, he gave me a ride over to his place. He took the man up on his offer and spent two nights at his home. When he claims up, he, he was drugged and then and sexually assaulted. Then he was, said he fought back in self-defense. I sat when I punched him in the face, and he was over top of me, and he shoved me into the bed. And I was trying to get him away from me. I couldn't get him away from me. Kai fled to Philadelphia, where he was apprehended four days later. After the beating, did you realize how badly he was injured? No. You just th thought I had to get out of there. I, I just I just had to get out of there. When I, when I woke up and he was over top of me, I panicked. Did you know he was dead? I didn't know that he was dead. This man's ear was almost ripped off. His neck was fractured. His face was fractured. The ear injury came from one horizontal kick from on my back. That ought to tell you I was on my back on the floor. But the jury didn't believe he acted in self-defense. If this was self-defense, why didn't you call the police right then and there? I'm an illegal immigrant. They aren't, they, they, they aren't going to investigate. Kai what still happened? insists he's innocent and says critical evidence that could have proved he was drugged was ignored and destroyed. He's filing an appeal. In this case, the judge told the jury that the burden was on me to prove intoxication and therefore self-defense and therefore my innocence. Who's the real you, right? Is it is it Kai the hitchhiker who we saw in this video, the guy who saved the day, the guy who came to the rescue, or is it Kai the murderer? Who's the real you? De definitely never Kai the murderer. I've never murdered anyone. 